Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 8th and the 15th of December 2018. Happy holidays everyone from every religion and creed and race and country. Happy end of the year for all of us and a happy new year to us all. We're going to talk more about the ending of the year in 2019, not in this video, but in one coming up. Let's talk about how your week was. Was it a week that you were introduced to the unexpected? Was it a week that you were faced with the Im inimaginable or the unconquerable or um, the unpredictable? or the immaculate, something you couldn't even influence if you wanted to, totally out of your control and reach. Were you faced with something like that in your life? Did you feel that feeling of impotence, of feeling puny in this oceanic current? And has this feeling produced an awe and a thanksgiving for everything that is going on in your life? For this miracle, for this miracle, as Prem Rawat, one of my greatest teachers, always says, of this breath coming in and this breath leaving. And as my father used to tell me as a kid, we have no guarantee over our next breath. So this was that kind of week and we still have this kind of energy in the sky. We have Jupiter and the Sun close by over the last few weeks, on the one hand, giving us tremendous optimism and a great need to take this life as an adventure and step forward into unknown territory, to really believe that we can do it, that we can heal this, that this is going to be all right, that we're learning, that we're developing, that we're expanding. And there's grace. And on the other hand, there's Neptune and, and Mars just reminding us we're two ants on a spaceship going a trillion miles an hour through space. There's things that would never be in our control, that, is, that are far, far beyond our reach and understanding or influence. And that sometimes we have to admit our impotence facing that and just float with it, just go along with it, give in to it humbly. These two forces working in our lives have something in common. They're both very imaginative. Not only do they have great imagination and inspiration, they have the ability to bring us back to our roots, Neptune, Jupiter, back to a pure, older place. Not as complicated as we've done it, as we've made it. A place that we remember still and long to eternalize in our realities. So it can bring a lot of imagination, inspiration and this romantic belief that together we can change things. That together we are invincible. And of course that in turn can cause passivity and over-optimism and overconfidence, and then 
in this magic circle as it does, <coughs> being faced with our weakness and reality. So we don't always have to go through that. We can understand that we need to draw a line, a, a ladder, if you will, between the ideal and the real, between the needed and the given. Right, Georgia? There's a lot of rain. You want to come say hello? Come. Hello, Georgia. It's a lot of rain, yes. Ooh, rain. Georgia is excited from the rain. So, what is this week all about? Well, it's a kind of dreamy week, like I said, with this Neptune and this... Uh, um, with this Neptune and this uh, uh, Mars attached on the one hand. And it could be a week that we take up responsibility to deal with the real. This isn't the paradise I wanted it to be. It's just my backyard. It's not the tropical uh, 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 heaven that I was thinking about. It's actually raining and it's cold. But if I don't work with what I have, if I don't make it more like that picture in my head, and if I won't learn to enjoy and respect and give thanks to whatever there is. Appreciate whatever there is. Okay, you wanted the tropics, but there's an amazing thunderstorm in the sky. Amazing. Open your eyes to it. Listen to the beating of that godly drums. It's a one-time show. And you have the front seat. And what I mean is that we need to take responsibility to how we paint our worlds. Have no, uh, um, be sure that how you draw up the world, that's how it is for you. Have no doubt about it. How you make your world is how it will reflect back into you. Simple as that. So let's go down to the weekdays and see what's happening in the sky. At the 8th, it's a Saturday. It's a good day. And remember, I'm talking in Central European time. So if you're, moving in, if you're in the States, move it about 9 hours uh, before the time. Like you're before uh, Europe, nine hours. And if you're in the Pacific, in Australia, it's about nine hours ahead. The 8th, Saturday, especially from noontime, good to give yourselves a break. Do something fun. Eat, drink, be with people, go out of your routines. The 9th could be a too judgmental morning. It's a Sunday. It needs to be looser. And it could be a little bit uptight. Be careful not to give in to feelings of insecurity or being too judgmental regarding yourselves and others. From the afternoon and evening time, it's a great time for some activity. Doing something that involves energy and creativity is best on that Sunday night. Monday morning, be careful on the roads. Don't go too fast. Don't be too obsessive about your ideas and simply don't follow the drama. Communication could be a little tricky on the 10th. There's a moon in Capricorn. There's a queen conquest between Mercury and Uranus. So it's more about cleansing things from your communication. It's about finding new, better ways to communicate and understand what needs to go. 
Um, and that's especially good from the evening time onwards. Just don't be too rebellious on that Monday. Tuesday the 11th, the moon moves from hard as Capricorn to alternative Aquarius. Could lift and change things and, 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 and um, give us a stir that lively up things a bit. And especially from the afternoon time, it could be a fun day, uh, a day uh, that we can enjoy ourselves or expand our horizons, but we have to be careful with relationships at noontime, as it could be a little too conflictual. Wednesday, wonderful day, sextile between the moon and the sun, when the moon is in Aquarius. It's also the beginning of really starting to feel that Venus trine Neptune that is going to follow us through the next week and a half. It's a romantic time in our relationships. It's a time that we can enjoy more of the subtleness and the emotional themes in our relationships. And it's a great time to bring romance back in. Just don't be too naive. Don't be too uh, uh, idealistic about people that come into your life at this time. And from time to time, do take the rose-colored glasses off and see what and who is really standing in front of you. As long as you do that, it's a wonderful time to introduce a Care Bear attitude into your relationships. Just be real with money. Keep it real with money over the next week and a half. The 13th um, is an even more dreamy day as the moon moves into Pisces. And Mercury moves into Sagittarius, it's its opposite sign. Mercury in Sagittarius isn't that interested in learning anymore. It's more about disseminating what I've learned. It's not so much about enriching my opinion with the opinions of people around me, but it's more about preaching my truth to others. So we should be careful not to become a little bit like that ourselves. But it is, it is a good time to speak out, and it is a good time to actually... Um, pluralize and, and, and verbalize everything that we believe in. Um, saying that, we need to be more sensitive about how we communicate things and not overrun the opinions and, and sometimes the needs and ideas of other people around us. December 13th and 14th is also the time that we have the Gemini's uh, meteor shower every year. The Gemini's meteor shower is one of the nicest, if not the nicest meteor shower that we have here. It's very colorful and it's a lot of meteors. It's over, um, I think, 120 meteors per hour coming from the Gemini constellation. So if you have time after midnight, if you're not in a light polluted area, the, the first quarter moon is going to... Uh, set after midnight, leaving the sky open and dark for all these beautiful meteors. Hopefully, if it's not cloudy, you can enjoy a nice show. Um, Friday, the 14th, moon still in Pisces. Beautiful day to take it easy, enjoy yourself, have a good meal, have good company. There's a trying to Venus on that day. Just don't have too much of that cake as there is a square to Jupiter as well. Um... It's a good uh, morning to take things ahead, to catch up on the week, so to speak. There's a sextile to, uh, to uh, Saturn that's going to make us more reliable and steady. But from the evening onwards, forget about anything concerning your left brain activity. Just enjoy yourself. Do something artistic. Do something uh, 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 spiritual or just go see the movies. Go see a show. Uh, you know... Don't occupy any left brain energy at that time. Right brain, however, is a spectacular time on Friday evening. Saturday, the 15th, um, the morning is very energetic for Saturday and a little too dramatic, so chill. Basically, it's a sensitive Saturday. And, and from the evening time, we really have to be careful not to feel to hurt ourselves or hurt other people, not to talk from our own pain. Uh, and, and if we are working with pain and sensitivity at that time, it could be a great time for healing as well. So, 
if anyone wants to join the chart uh, analysis group or the beginners group in English, just uh, call me on WhatsApp. It's 972-54-2005-777. WhatsApp is a free call. You can call from wherever you are around the world. And my site scheduling system is, uh, is taking its time. Uh, hopefully now that Mercury is out of its retrograde, we can move faster forward. But you want to join a group, just call me. It's the simplest way. Anyway, thank you for sharing. Thank you for caring. Thank you for commenting. And thank you for spreading these videos to more people by doing so. May we have a beautiful, successful week. Live long and prosper.